it has now been several days since we had our hands on watchOS 7, the developer beta, and these are all the new changes and new features that's making their way to our Apple Watch. As the time of making this video, currently we are on watchOS 7 developer beta and the build number is right there. Now of course we're still in the beta so it's expected that we're going to go ahead and see more changes and more new features getting added every single update. But until then, this is the complete list of all the new changes and features worth talking about. Let's start off by going over Control Center. Control Center on watchOS 7 has new features. If you actually tap edit, you can actually delete some of these toggles and tap the green to re-add them. When you have AirPods connected, you can actually enable it so Siri could actually read your message or your notifications to your AirPods or other Bluetooth connected headphones. There's a new bedtime right here. When you tap on this, this is perfect whenever you take like a day nap. You could track that because it will also set all your other devices to do not disturb mode. Not only that, your Apple Watch will switch to a more energy efficient watch face to make it throughout the entire nap. During sleep mode, rotating the digital crown will unlock your watch so you have access to it again. For the Series 4 and 5, Siri now has a new animation. On watchOS 7 for the Series 3, it retained the older Siri animation. Siri on the Apple Watch can now translate. How do you say how are you in Mandarin? In Mandarin Chinese, how are you is... Ma. A new privacy change is now whenever the microphone is in use on your device, there's an orange icon on top. Although this is a beta version of watchOS 7, there's a quicker, more faster, noticeable launch animation whenever you switch between apps compared to watchOS 6. Force press support is gone on watchOS 7. To switch from the grid view to the list view, now you have to go into your settings, go down to app list, and here you can select the different layouts. Still in the settings, if you go down to the calculator app, here is where you can switch between the percentage and the tips. Now since force press is gone. If we go back and go all the way on top, there's now is a notification tab right here that gives you access to a bunch of different settings which you will normally find on the Apple Watch app. Now you could adjust more stuff here. Still in the setting app, another new change is if you go back, there is now a battery section. Here is where you can find your battery graph history, but not only that, down below, tap on battery health, that percentage is your Apple Watch battery capacity. Another new battery feature is if you go down, there's now a new battery optimize. Very similar to what Apple added on our iPhones last year, the watch will keep track of your charging habits and as soon as your watch is at 80%, it'll slowly charge it to 100% to give you the maximum longevity possible for your Apple Watch lifespan. The new hand watching detection can be accessed right here. This is where you could turn it on and adjust some of its settings. This feature is only coming to the Series 4 and 5 since they both have the auto workout detection, which is what's used to track when you're watching your hands. From my personal experience, it works 90% of the time. And if it doesn't detect it at first, just give it a couple seconds, it'll credit you the time and we'll begin counting. When you complete it at 20 seconds, it'll tap you and reward you with this animation. If you're a few seconds short, it'll show you this message. And it won't go away until you dismiss it or you start the timer over again. Inside the health app on our phone, if you go to browse and go all the way down where it says other data, right here it keeps a log of all your previous hand washing times. You may also add data if you want to manually log something in. Now if you would like to clear your notifications, simply bring down the notification tab and tap clear all since force press is now gone. Back in our setting app, if you go all the way down to sound and haptics, in the headphone audio section, you can now set a sound level. With this enabled, now whenever you have a pair of Bluetooth headphones paired to your Apple Watch, there is going to be a volume limit that you can set. In the accessibility tab, there is now a hearing device section right here. When paying with Apple Pay, cards are now not only stacked differently, but it also has a nicer layout and also gives you more information about your credit card on top. There's now new app improvements. For instance, if we launch the camera remote app, now you actually have these dots right here that will give you quicker access to your settings now that force press isn't supported anymore on watchOS 7. The native Apple Watch stock apps also got changed. Now there's a new viewing section right here where you can actually change it from different views. The same also happened on the weather application. Now you can actually switch between temperature, conditions, and predictions. 
the timer app also got a new change. If you go all the way down, it actually keeps track of your recent time as well. Inside the message application, now you can actually compose a new message right here. And then, no matter the application, whatever app is using the dictation, there's now is a globe icon right here. So whatever different languages you have on your iPhone's keyboard, you can now switch on it on the Apple Watch as well. When replying to a message, if you scroll all the way down past this, there is now a new section to send a location or view that contact information as well as send them a message or call them directly right here with other grayed out options if they also have a supported Apple device. In the mail application, you are now able to send a new message right here as well. Inside the workout app, the three new workouts that they added was dance, cool down, and core training. Although the activity app on the Apple Watch remained the same, the title on the activity app on your iPhone is now changed to fitness. Hopefully in the future, both will be called fitness. In the map application, if you actually set a destination, there's now is a placeholder for the new soon to be released cycling route where the watch will be able to show us some cycling routes. Now other welcoming innovations is now there actually is a dedicated shortcut application officially on the Apple Watch. Here you can view all the previously made shortcuts you made on your iPhone. Another new app is now the sleep app. This is new. Here you can actually adjust some of the settings, view your full schedule, your sleep data, and all that jazz right here. Then in addition to that, a new sleep time feature is that your Apple Watch is going to vibrate when your alarm goes off on your iPhone and the Apple Watch. So you don't have to wear the Apple Watch and even on the charger it's going to vibrate to make this sound to try to wake you up. Now if you're using an always on display Apple Watch like the Series 5 and I'm assuming the Series 6, now you can actually quickly access a complication by tapping on the complication on your watch face. So you don't have to do that two finger tap to wake up the screen and then tap on the complication. When editing a watch face, next to the edit button, there's an up arrow share icon now. This is one of the two different ways you could share the exact watch face to somebody that requests for it. So if you add their contact information, you could also add a message down here. And as soon as they receive that message, they could equip that watch face on their Apple Watch. And if you go back over here in the data tab right here on the watch face, you can actually include certain complications if you want them to also have access to them so they could download it on the App Store for their Apple Watch. And then method number two, if you go to the native Apple Watch app on your iPhone, click on the watch face, click on the up arrow icon, you can actually export this file either by airdrop, so you can actually share it online across other social media platforms by using like a storage drive client like Google Drive or something as an example and you could share them that exact link so they could download that file. When customizing your watch face, there is now a new look. And then if you switch to the color section, there's now a new palette of many different colors right here displayed on the side. And then now when choosing a complication, if you spin the digital crown rapidly, you can skip through complications by their alphabetical order. And then not only that, now some of these complications are actually categorized. So if we go into the weather complication section, weather complications organized. In addition to that, we also have new shortcuts to other applications, one of which is the camera remote, the shortcut shortcuts, the bedtime, and a new atmosphere for the moon complication. Then in addition to that, the world clock now has support for multiple different world clock complications. So you can fit multiple different time zones now. Now if you're selecting a photo on your library to be a watch face, there's actually new filters very similar to like Instagram or other social media platforms. You could overlap it with a filter and it really does change the look of the image. And then the new watch face I got added for Watch OS 7 is Chronograph Pro, which has a technimeter right there in the center. You could swap it with a 60 second timer or other timers you could select from. It also has support for four corner complications as well. This watch face will only become available for the Series 4 and newer Apple Watches. And then another watch face I got a new feature is the extra large watch face now has support for a complication where in the past it didn't. It was just showing you this larger time, but now you can actually include a large complication, which it does support third party apps and it's also innovated on the Series 3. 
But that is all when it comes to new features, new changes that's making its way to our Apple Watch. Stay tuned because I'm pretty sure that Apple's gonna roll out new features, more updates. So make sure to stay tuned for those upcoming videos in case something massive happens during the beta version of watchOS 7. Guys, if you'd like to see more, maybe you're curious on what kind of accessories I have on my Apple Watch, you can go ahead and watch this video over there as I go through all my favorite accessories I'm currently rocking on my Apple Watch. And then that video over there, that's just my review of watchOS 7 in its beta developer stage. In case you're curious to know more on how my experience has been so far on using it on my personal device. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.